Assalamu alaikum. We have just launched our Fight with Light fundraising campaign for Seekers Hub Global, where our goal is to raise $60,000 in monthly donations by the end of the year. And all of this money will go towards fighting ignorance and fighting hatred and fighting extremism by spreading the light of knowledge and the light of guidance and the light of the way of our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We hope that you'll join us in this fight. And you can do so by becoming a monthly donor at seekershub.org slash donate. You're listening to the Qur'an Tafsir, Understanding the Word of Allah, a podcast dedicated to explaining the Qur'an presented by various reliable scholars. This episode is presented by Sheikh Faid Muhammad Saeed of La Raib Institute for Education in the UK. This podcast is powered by Seekers Hub Global. Visit seekershub.org for online courses, our Q&A service with reliable scholars, and engaging media. And you remember we the last ayah that we spoke is about when Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala said Inna al-insana li rabbihi lakanud Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said mankind or human being are very ungrateful to their Lord. And this word insan, human being, had been used in the Quran in many ways. The first thing is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al Isra. In Surah Al Isra. Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala said Verily we've honored mankind We've raised mankind And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said We facilitated everything for them And you remember We spoke about many things That Allah has given us And from the greatest of blessings That Rabbi has given us Is Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala Made us in control of most of the rizq and you remember what we said last week? That Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Mulk, He is the one that who made this earth on your service. You do whatever you want. We live in it. And when we die, even we get paid in this earth from the Rahmah of Allah. And in this very ayah, there is a deep meaning that I wanted to uh, to us to discuss about subhanallah look no matter how the children, how much we love one another I'm just going to give you one example there is no dispute that subhanallah and no one can say I love this person more than his father, more than his mother. Mother loves her child more than anyone else. Isn't it? Huh? And that's why even the Sahaba always, when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked the Sahaba a question, they would say, Allah wa Rasulullah wa Alam. Allah and his messenger knows best. But except in one, in one situation, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw in after the, after the battle was finished there was a mother she was looking for her child keep looking for her child when she saw her child she didn't care about anyone else she didn't think even about a shame or someone is going to see me she start first feeding her child say mother subhanallah because all what she was thinking about is my child didn't eat my child might be hungry. It's what was was we were thinking about. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Do you think this woman will throw her child to the hellfire?" So all the Sahaba they didn't say Allah and His Messenger knows best. They said. They said, no, Ya Rasulullah. She will never do this. How do they know this? Because all of them, they had mothers. And 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah is much more merciful with his creation more than this woman with her own child. Subhanallah. So, Rabbi is Rahman Rahim. We cannot just keep giving tickets to people, subhanallah, like a referee in a, in a football match. This one is going to Jannah, this one is going to Jahannam. This is, this is musiba, big musiba. When everyone thinks, I am safe, I am good, and everyone is bad. Allah knows. So anyway, so when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do you think this woman will throw her child to the hellfire? They said no. Now I'm going to give, I use that example with you now. So, this is how much a mother will love her child, isn't it? But imagine if that child die, if the child was to die, will the mother, because she loved her son, will say, no, I'm, my, I'm not going to bury my son. He, he has to stay with us in the house. Will any, have you ever, can you imagine this will happen? Do you understand? When we die, do you think, no matter how much we love each other, when we die, will anyone say, no, we don't want him to be buried. We want, we want him to be with us. We are, not going to, we are not going to allow this to happen to him. Will, do, do you think this will happen? Do we do that for others? And no one will do that for us. So, subhanallah, for us to understand, even when we die, no one will welcome, will welcome us other than this earth. That's why Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Minha khalaqnakum. We've created this from it. Wafiha nu'idukum. And we will turn you back to it. Waminha nu'khridukum taratan ukhra. And we will resurrect you from, from it again. Do you understand? That's why the Arabs they used to call the earth mother, um. She's our mother. We live in it. You fall. You, you do whatever you want on, the, on this earth. Why? Because Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala made it in your service. When Allah speaks about the blessing that he has given us, you have to think, will I be able to live without it? No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about water. And the name of water. Can you imagine to live without water? And earth, can you, can you imagine to live anywhere else? Ah. So Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about humans, how much Allah has facilitated things for us. The way he created us. He said, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ We've created mankind in the best form. In the best form. It cannot be any better. And no matter what you think about yourself, Still, Allah has created you in the best form. Hmm? Remember, I think Allah, if I told you before about the man that came to Imam Shafi'i, uh, husband came to, the, to his house. Did I tell you this? A husband came to his house and he saw his wife wasn't, yani, she wasn't ready. Maybe she was cooking, she was doing things. So when he came, he said, Wallahi al-Azim. I will go out and I will come back if I don't see you. If you don't, if when I come back, if you are not more, if you are not much more beautiful than the moon, you are divorced. Huh? Subhanallah. So yet Imam Shafi'i said, when he went to Imam Malik, Imam Malik said to him, "If you go back to the house, then your wife is divorced." He said, "What shall I do?" He said, "Don't go back. If you want to remain as a husband, don't go back home." So it's how is it? So I said, that's it. Because you made condition. He said, no, no matter what your wife do to herself, she's not going to be much more beautiful than the moon. Imam Shafi'i said to him, no. Your wife is much more beautiful than the moon. Do you know my wife? When did you see my wife? He said, no. He said, because Allah said in the Quran, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوَةِ Where you create mankind in the best form. So you cannot be any better than the way you are. This is how Allah has created you. So, we as humans, among all the creation of Allah, Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a lot of rights and made everything in our service. But also Allah speaks about me as human being, how I am. So Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, 
خلق الإنسان ضعيفة كريت ما كان أبسلوت من أبسلوت ويكنس الله سبحانه وتعالى يذكر as as always hasty anxious oppressive and in this ayat Allah said كنود very very ungrateful سبحان الله So these are things that come when we associate. This is our nature. The more we grow, because there is this kind of beauty in us when we are when we are children. And the more we grow, subhanallah, the more we associate with people, this beauty, this uh, honesty, it disappears slowly, slowly. And that's why, subhanAllah, it is very much important to try our very best not to teach our children to be, subhanAllah, accept what is good. Look at Sayyidi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How he was teaching Sayyidina Hassan and Hussein. He wasn't sitting down teaching them, do this, do this. But he was, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, encouraging them for khair. He was encouraging them for khair. That's why they were... Uh, they are, when they were children, they were like great men, subhanAllah. Even the way they were delivering the message to people. They saw a man, subhanAllah. And they saw a man was making wudu, and his wudu, there was a lot of... Yani, his, when he was making wudu, he was making a lot of mistakes. He was making a lot of mistakes. So Sayyidina Hassan went to this man and said to him, Oh, uncle... Me and my brother, we are having a dispute. Can you be a judge? He said, yes, I can. He said, I think my wudu is better than my brother. And my brother thinks his wudu is better. So can you look at us and subhanAllah. So subhanAllah. Sayyidina Hassan made the wudu the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught him. And Sayyidina Hussein made the wudu the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught him. And the, and the uncle understood the message behind it. He said, Allah knows where to put his message. May Allah reward you with the best. So you see, subhanAllah, they grow up in this atmosphere. And in some parts of the world, Wallahi al -Azim, you see, you know, in this material world that we are living in, we think we are the best. Because we have certain things, or cer certain technologies, we think they don't know anything. But Wallahi, I saw one tribe, a long time ago, subhanAllah, I saw one tribe in nowhere in some part of the world where there is no technology, no teaching, and even they don't write or uh, they cannot read or write. And they were not Muslims, by the way. But naturally, the way, subhanAllah, so I saw, subhanAllah, and I saw a gathering, I didn't understand, but I saw a gathering, and they were talking very serious. And the children, they sit in a circle with them. And they listen to them, and they give and take. So I spoke to the head of the chief of the tribe, I said, what's happening? He said, our children, he said, since they were born, we don't deal with them like children. We respect them, and we say, oh, such and such said this, and when we have problem, we come and we consult them. So I said, the wisdom grows with them. So, subhanak Rabbi, this issue of honesty that Allah has given us, is referred in hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Kullu mawludin yuladu ala al-fitrah. When we were born, there is no Muslim child or non-Muslim child. Naturally, we are all, mashallah, great. Yani in uh, the creation of Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the more we grow, everything around us affects us. Your family, your friends, the society, everything around you. So Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said Inna al-insana li rabbihi lakanood In my nature I've got this kind of ungratefulness Rebellion So don't take When we read the Quran We shouldn't take ayah by ayah We should take all the ayah That are relevant to this ayah so take this with the other ayah, how Allah describes human being. That's what I said at the beginning, Allah honors mankind. And Allah makes everything in the service of mankind. 
And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described human, humans as ignorant, hasty, anxious, oppressive. And here Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala says, kanood, ungrateful. And then Allah said, وَإِنَّهُ عَلَىٰ ذَٰلِكَ لَشَهِيدٌ And verily, everyone will say, they will confirm that. How they confirm that? When they sit down, when you speak to them about all the blessing that the Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. You see, sometimes a small problem we can, we, will, will make us khalas, will dominate our life. As I have never had a good days. When you are hungry, very, very hungry, you are in nowhere, you, can, you don't have money to buy food. At that time, you, you are not going to remember what you've been eating before two, three weeks. Because the moment will make you forget what you had before. And if you are to remember how Allah has solved your problem, you will even know that Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala will solve it in, in a different way. Subhanallah. Sayyidi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He went with, with, with some of the sahaba in, in, in a very long hadith And then subhanallah يعني, They needed to rest So at that time the shi look, look at the simplicity of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam There was not a special chair for, for the messenger of Allah That the sahaba have to carry there was no special service for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi Even he didn't even allow the companions to stand up for him sallallahu alaihi wasallam. One stay stood, and he said, لا تعظموني كما تعظمون عاجم. Don't deal with me the way people deal with kings. I'm a slave of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But he asked the Sahaba to stand up for another person. Subhanallah. When Sayyidina Saad Mu'ad was in, when, was wounded when he came he said qumu li sayyidikum stand up for your master la ilaha illallah he didn't allow them to do that for him he didn't allow them to do that for him because of his humility and he asked them to do this for another for others to teach them how to respect each other sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so they were, so they wanted to rest they wanted to rest so they saw one tree that has got Yani the li uh, a lot of leaves. So said, Ya Rasulullah, you rest here. And look at the other of the Sahaba. They didn't come, all of them around him, they gave him a space. So all of them, they were shut up. So the Sahaba slept. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam slept. So a man said, this is my chance to kill Muhammad. So he came all the way and he put his sword in his neck. Salawat Rabbi wa salam alayhi. Man yunjika al-ana minni ya Muhammad. Who's going to save you? Who's going to protect you from me ya Muhammad? Naam. So Allah said that even, yani, even he didn't even open his eyes. He said, Allah. Qulil Allah thumma dharhum fi khawdihim ya Allah. Say Allah. This is Iman. Now many people speak about Aqeedah. About Tawheed. This is Tawheed. Tawheed is not a lesson that you learn. It's not a formula. You do this, you do this, you have Tawheed. No. Tawheed is you live Tawheed in your life. When you, when, when you have problems, you say Allah is greater. That is Tawheed. Tawheed is not someone that you just keep writing about it books. Tawheed, you live in Tawheed. La ilaha illallah. So Salaam says, Allah, the man couldn't even stand up. Because this Allah came from mu'min with one with yaqeen. Subhanaka Rabbi. Subhanaka Rabbi. And you know what? Imam Ahmed, rahmatullahi alayhi, when he was teaching, someone came to him and said, Ya yeah, Imam, there is a woman and uh, they said there is a chin in her stomach and he's laughing and speaking loudly and he's got regard for no one. So he said to one of his students, he said, go and read Ayat al-Kursi. He went here read Ayat al-Kursi, disappeared. The day Imam Ahmed died, 
They came and said, Imam Ahmed died. They said, so where was the student that uh, Imam Ahmed said, said here? They said, then it's okay, alhamdulillah, at least we've got that one. The man came. Start reading Ayatul Kursi, Ayatul Kursi, Ayatul Kursi, Ayatul Kursi. And the jinn was even going much more crazy. And then the jinn said to him, the ayah is there, but where is the taqwa or the one that who sent you with the ayah before? So it's not the ayah that we read. It's who is this coming from, what it matters as well. So, Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he said, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لِرَبِّهِ لَكَنُودُ وَإِنَّهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ لَشَهِيدٌ And they confirmed that. Because if you think, all of us, we have a lot of days that Allah has saved us. And there are a lot of failures, a lot of achievements, a lot of success. So, yani, when you are in a problem, don't think about the problem that you are in. Remember the one that who has saved you. Still Allah is speaking about human nature. You need someone to remind you. Don't you say sometimes, you might ask me, if you can stop writing for one second. You might ask me, why do I need Allah to speak to me about me? I know myself. Is it something that we can think of? Huh? But I'll tell you, why, don't you, why do you go to the doctor to complain about something? And then the doctor will tell you, you've got this, you've got this, you've got this. He's telling you about you. Do you understand the point that I'm making? And maybe the doctor himself doesn't know he needs another doctor as well to diagnose his problem. But when Allah speaks about me, Allah is teaching me. And when it comes from Allah, it's coming from Ar-Rahim, from the most merciful. When he, told, when he tells me things, so that I can understand myself. And I don't even feel bad about myself. This, when Allah tells you, Allah, Allah doesn't want you to feel bad, to say, I'm ignorant, I am this, I am this, I am this, I am this. No. Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you about you. So that subhanallah, this helps you in time of when you make mistakes, you don't go to despair and giving up. This is my nature. And also when Allah bless you with a great success so that you can understand, you say, Subhanallah. And with the blessing of Allah, I became who I am now. Otherwise, this is my nature. Does that make sense? So Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِنَّهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ لَشَهِيدٌ Then Rabbi goes on to say, وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدٌ Allah said, and they love khair very much. What is this khair? What does the word khair mean in Arabic? Khair, what does khair mean? Blessing or good. But in this ayah Allah is referring to money, to wealth. Is wealth khair? Is money and wealth good? Huh? What do you think? 50-50. It is khair. It is khair. It is khair. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes wealth in another ayah. إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ Fitna, very real. Many of your children are Big test for you, fitna. But because they are test, they are test. It doesn't mean that you have to hate your child, <laughs> and you don't have to hate money as well. However, as in some of the du'as say, "Allahumma jalhu fi ayina wa la tajalhu fi qulubina." Allah make it in our hands, but don't make it in our hearts. It doesn't have to ma to dominate your life. And we have to be very careful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in another ayah, فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانِ إِذَا مَبْتَلَهُ فَقَدْ إِذَا مَبْتَلَهُ فَقَدْ رَعَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَهَانًا When Allah tests mankind, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreases the amount of blessing that Allah was given them, they say Allah has humiliated me. Allah describes our relationship with the money. إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ جَزُوعًا وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا When Allah gives them khair, 
speaking about money. When Allah gives them money, they save it for themselves. They don't want to share it with anyone. So Allah is calling it khair because of me, because every one of us, no one, no human being will think it is bad for me. So Rabbi, this is why they call tanazzul. Tanazzul means when they come to your level, when they, in, when they speak with you. Tanazzul. Come to your level to, uh, to explain to you. And that's why Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu alayhi salam used to say, خَاطِبُ النَّاسَ بِمَا يَعْرِفُونَ When you speak to people, speak with them according to their understanding. Because if you don't do so, you are going to be a big test for them. You will make them hate Allah and His Messenger. Huh? So here, Rabbi is tanazzul. For me, for my brothers, for my sisters, is khair. So Allah said, we love it very much. Why Allah is saying we love this wealth, this money very much? Allah is, Allah is directing me. This Quran is a direction. He's saying, when Allah says they love it very much, Allah is not criticizing me for loving it. But Allah is criticizing me for shadidan very much. Because there is a lot of other things that I should love more than that. Does that make sense? Because there are many people, subhanallah, even subhanallah, they don't even enjoy themselves. Miskeen, wallahi, uh, one of the mashaykh was telling me, he went to, to divide the inheritance of someone. And he said, subhanallah, when they called me, I said, because I know the person very much. I said, such and such. What I'm going to يعني, divide? He's got, he had nothing in his life. And he said, Wallah, he told me, he, I, I used to divide and I used to give him some of the bread that I buy. He said, Subhanallah, you know, uh, said, I buy some bread, I, I used to give him some. And so he said, when I went to the house, they said, he had got this, he had this, he had this. In the same road, he had three houses. So Subhanallah, and he was living that miserable life. And this is how we are with money. Not only this, even subhanallah, it was known even among, even the sahaba were normal human beings like us. There were salihin, there were writers, but when it comes to this, <coughs> yani, it was narrated subhanallah, yani, uh, in uh, Sayyidina al-Abbas, radiyallahu anhu, once came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ya Rasulullah, give me. There was a lot of money that came to Rasulullah sallallahu from Bahrain, a lot of gold, dinars. And Sayyidi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, he, didn't, he wasn't even worried about it. In fact, it was narrated when, when the money came at night, it was, يعني, when Rasul, they, they, uh, they kept it outside the door of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Sayyidi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa went to the mihrab, even he didn't even look at it. Even he didn't even look at it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he went to the mihrab, salawat rabbi wa sallamu alayhi so Salah so, even he didn't even look at it. So after Salah, when the Salah was finished, he saw a lot of people. The masjid was full. So Rasulullah didn't say, today you are here for money. He didn't even say that to them. So he, he, so he smiled, he said, You've heard that some money came to us. He said, Abshiru, it is all for you. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is all for you. He said, he was keep giving, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was keep giving, keep giving, keep giving, keep giving. Until it was finished. And when he came, when he went to his wife, said, Aisha, said, do you have some food? She said, you are asking me for food? You've been giving all the money away and you've got nothing for us. She said, I've got nothing for you other than vinegar. So Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam said, Vinegar is the best soup that you had. And now some people they take it literally and say, Vinegar is the best soup. La ilaha illallah. It doesn't mean that it is the best food. But at that time it was the best food for Rasulullah. Whatever you had in your table is the best thing. This is how we have to take it. Because some of us we have to understand the deen for Allah's sake. I was told someone invited people and gave them vinegar and bread and said them, This is the best food. Rasulullah said this. For Allah's sake. Yeah, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he used to invite people, he used to feed them sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But that is what he had. 
I, I said to them, did you ask this man, does he have vinegar all day, every day? <laughs> or, he, or he just wanted to teach them the lesson by teaching them the hadith. Anyway, so Sayyidina Abbas came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, you know, ya Rasulullah, I paid for myself, a ransom for myself and for your cousins. So he said, give me some, some money. So Rasulullah sallam said, take, there it is. So Sayyidina Abbas pulled up his kameez and he started putting a lot of this money. And then Meskeen Sayyidina Abbas, when he wanted to stand up, he couldn't. It was too, it was too heavy. He was keep gathering, he was keep collecting the money. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, can you ask one of your companions to help me? He said, no. <laughs> he said, no. So, and you are my nephew, you can help me. He said, no, I'm not helping you. So Sayyidina Abbas took some and then he wanted again. It was too heavy for him. He said, Ya Rasulullah, can you help me? He said, No. One of your companions, he said, No. Because my companion is yes, but they are not they are not there to serve Bani Hashim. And then Sayyidina Abbas took it and he was going, it was very heavy for him. And Rasulullah was keep wondering, subhanAllah. So yes, so it is very natural for people to be attached to money. But you should be very careful. This love, if it goes excessive, it might destroy you even before you enjoy it. And you have to be much more careful. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas said, when it comes to money, he said, Halaluhu hisab wa haramuhu adab. He said, the halal of the money that you collect, the least will happen is you're going to be accountable for it. Because in a hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يوم القيامة from the question that you will ask it وعن ماله about your money من مكتسبه where did you get it from and how did you spend it as well because it's not your choice it's not your choice the, yes it is yours but it's not yours forever and Allah has trusted you with this so Allah said وإنه لحب الخير لشديد so the nature of mankind is that we love to own. And we keep collecting that we don't know even whether we are going to enjoy it or not. And Allah is warning me by telling me this is the nature of everyone. But as a mu'min you have to be very different in the way you deal with it. That Rabbi subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to me and to my sisters, to my brother saying after collecting all this money And being ungrateful. Allah said, أَفَلَا يَعْلَمُ إِذَا بُعْثِرَ مَا فِي الْقُبُورِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ While we are very busy in this dunya, collecting, gathering, when Allah used the money, it is, it is a symbol of many things that we want to achieve in this dunya. Don't you see, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. So Rabbi is directing my way of thinking, he said. Don't they know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up the graves? And here, please, please, please think. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ma fil qubur. Didn't say, Man fil qubur. <coughs> what is the difference when we say, Man and Ma? What and? What and who? What and who? When you say man, if you, if you want to ask who is this in Arabic, you say man hada. If you want to ask what is this, you say ma hada. There is a big difference. Ma, what you use it for things. You understand? Can you, do you expect when, if someone is going to ask about a person, say what is this? Huh? Do you explain that? But when you ask about things, you say, what is this? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, what is in the graves? He didn't say, who is in the graves? Are you with me? What is the difference? Does it matter? Because once you are buried, it's not only fight who is in the grave. 
there is a lot of things associated with him in his grave. Thank you for listening to the Quran Tafsir, Understanding the Word of Allah. Help Seekers Hub give light to millions around the world by becoming a monthly donor at seekershub.org donate. Your donations are tax deductible in the U.S. and Canada.